Hello, it's Annabelle. Welcome to this Q&A. I heated up my coffee so I can chat with you, but by the time I was done going through all the questions, it's cold and almost gone. Thank you for all the submissions. I asked for some questions in the community tab of Cat Creature, and I have also copy and pasted the exact wording so you know if it's your question. Thank you so much for commenting. Since I'm an artist and Tyler's an engineer, it doesn't make things difficult because we see the world much differently. I don't think we see the world too differently. I've always wanted to have a life partner that has a different background because we can bring different perspectives to the table. He did art in high school so he loves visual art and although he's less creative in the abstract sense, I think he's very capable and creative in 3D modeling and art that can go hand in hand with programming. So it's very incredible. What is your take on having a significant other that's older than you? Tyler and I do have an age gap, almost six years. Our birthday is in the same week. Most of the time, I don't feel it. I've always stuck out as a little bit older or more mature. And Tyler is, how should I say, like adaptable. So he changes his energy a lot. My sister can give you a horoscopic <laughs> explanation. <laughs> astrological explanation. I mean, everybody changes a little bit depending on your environment, of course. The only times I really notice an age gap is just the fact that he is older than me, so he's in a different life stage. He is beginning his career while I'm figuring things out, so sometimes I'm like, you know, always uncertain or like turbulent. In our case, it's really helpful for me, so I don't think that I ruin his life by being the unstable one. What is the hardest thing going from a regular relationship where we live together every day at one point? Now it's about like three months sometimes would be I guess really long and then uh, right now I will see him in about three weeks because we will meet up and visit his family. But I think the biggest change is um, after seeing him again and then coming back to adjust to like school life and doing everything on my own. It's just that period of time you realize that your normal state of happiness is just always in a different place. It doesn't mean that you're sad, it just means that that person brings happiness to you. I tend to sleep better. In general, my sleeping habits are pretty good because I've trained myself on it a lot, but it's um, very effortless when, when I'm with my partner versus by myself. So how do you deal with not having with you anymore? Well, mm, you just go about your day and just enjoy your life as much as you can with what you're given and like I'm really lucky to be here at school so I'm focusing on that. Tyler and I actually don't talk super often um, when we do it's important how we do so like we don't text often because I'm not a texter in general and I think the quality of one's conversation varies a lot when it's like a FaceTime call versus texting and texting you feel sort of stressed to have to respond you know throughout the day while you're doing other tasks but when you're FaceTiming you're allocating that time. It's a blessing that you get to have instantaneous communication with each other in that way. One thing that sucks though is when there's a stressful situation, sometimes I think to myself, it sucks that he's not here to support me. One really dumb thing, this mattress rack is terrible uh, from Ikea. It buckles maybe because it's very moist here and basically it's always like crashing down. So every time somebody touches the bed, it will go boom. I guess with Tyler, it's so much easier for him to maneuver the heavy mattress. But like one time, the whole thing fell down. It wasn't just a few beams. So it was so tiring for me to actually support the mattress with my head and my back and to pull it up. But like, I'm realistic. I can't just sit there and fret and cry. Like no one is there to help me. You have to do it yourself. So I think if anything, it's a valuable experience. And when my mom was a single mom, she said that it definitely transformed her as well because when she was married to my biological dad, she was very different than she is today. And she said she was less capable. And your best relationship advice? All right, so something that I have experienced firsthand but first heard from Bubs was when she said that love is a choice. The feeling that you get, the romantic, loving feeling when you're with somebody or when you first fall in love, those feelings fade. That at times, you do not feel like a, an ounce of love, like the romantic butterfly, warm love. When you're living with someone and you pay bills and you talk about stressful things and you're planning for the future and you're problem solving together, that doesn't mean that you, you don't feel it ever. Love is a choice, so sometimes you have to make hard decisions or sometimes you have to be considerate 
when you don't feel that butterfly romantic love in your head you know okay i have a commitment to this person there that should make certain decisions more clear for you and tyler and i have definitely gone through a lot we're at a really good place right now it wasn't always and not that there's any like drama things happened uh and people are gonna be so curious i mean with time first of all i also know everyone wants to know how we met i will talk about it when we do a boyfriend video i just want it to be very official and to also have him there so we can share it together i just learned a lot about relationships in general maybe we can talk about it together tyler and i in our video someday are we ever gonna get more tyler cam perhaps this is that he lives at home with my family at the moment. I don't know. He kind of goes to work and comes home. So I'm not too sure what kind of content there is. Maybe of my family members. We will keep that in mind. And now moving on to the school stuff. Any advice for someone seriously considering art school? So first of all, I don't think it's too late for you to consider it because talking to many of my friends here at school, half of them, if not actually more, said that they did not decide to apply to art school until it was time to apply to college. Don't worry about lateness or how ahead you are compared to other people applying. Uh, just don't think about society for one second. <laughs> if you're seriously considering art school though, so my advice would be you should see university as a tool for you to become someone you want to be when you enter the career field. We need to have aspirations, right? If only when we were taught in high school, most curriculums are structured so that college seems like the final destination. Um, and more and more people are opening up about how after they receive their degrees, even their graduate degrees, they return home with no motivation and they feel lost because they actually have zero passion for what they studied for. Especially deciding your majors. I think the most helpful thing would be to look at careers that you are inspired by or that you can picture yourself at. And of course this will change, like definitely. It's a starting point, I guess, to like see that and then see what skills you need in your portfolio. For me, that's how I decided on going into textiles. I wanted to work in some sort of apparel field, but I'm not as interested in construction then I realized I love like the materiality and the fabrication textiles is like a whole other complicated conversation right now how do you go forward with a new assignment I think everybody initially gets stuck when you're met with a world of possibilities like on a blank page of course it helps because sometimes they give you a prompt but maybe you hate that prompt in this last year I've been much better about committing to my ideas and not starting over first I think it's to brainstorm, to entertain some ideas, even if you cannot initially imagine it. Don't expect to come out with an inspiration that will give you this glorious final vision all at once because things change. It comes to you in the process, especially for art. You will learn as you converse with it, as you create. And that's one of the most fulfilling parts is that it's a transformative art. And at the times where back then I scrapped everything and started over, it's because I settled. So afraid that I would run out of time or everybody seemed ahead of me. So I just ran with this one idea that seemed achievable and safe. And I ended up realizing, ah, oh, this literally, I dread doing this. I'm going to start over. Be ready to be wrong. No one is perfect. Who cares about that saying though? Like no one is perfect. It's more like no one needs to be perfect to enjoy life and do great things. How do you manage to plan your time with assignments? I'm gonna mash that with the question of like, how do you plan your days or your time? So I am a planner. I've always been a planner. I have the compulsive need to make lists or charts, plan everything in the instant I need it. So that's why I don't normally use planners or have very structured, bullet journals where I do it ahead of time and then I fill in the template. I, it's actually more of a cathartic thing for me to calm my brain down and to, um, brain? Brain? Brain. Yeah. It's a cathartic process to just put it here so I can look at it. I fully support planners, bullet journals, those look brilliant and maybe someday I can get to that place. But my mind is super chaotic and let me show you by this. I don't know if this is the right journal. Oh yes, I do not use 
nice planners because I feel like it's so nice that I'm afraid to ruin it. To this day, I've never really even finished one that is nice and beautiful because in my head, I'm like, I am not worthy. So because of that, I use very expendable notebooks. So this one I got for free. Not that it's cheap just because someone gave it to me for free, but for the most part, this is what I get for myself. It costs a dollar. I don't get mad when people ask me for paper in the middle of class and it's like, okay, sure, rip it out. But you gotta rip out the edge yourself because I am not your mom. I do not go in order and I rotate it whenever I want. So some pages are upside down. If you ever find that you cannot write on one side because you're like left-handed or you're right-handed just flip the book over and you will feel so comfortable also when you're in class you can pretend like you're taking notes and then when the teacher's not looking you flip the book and you have another notebook right here so one notebook is actually two notebooks i have two starts i have certain layouts that i like to gear to so this one is what i call my like two week Thing. And then sometimes I have my monthly little things where I just place a bunch of numbers down just so I can fathom like my days. Here's where I brainstorm for class. Here's another kind of two week thing. Here's another one of those number things. But then there are other times where I actually create real calendars with room to write. It's just for that moment. Like I rarely go back to it. Maybe on accident, I'll be like, oh hey, it's been five days. It feels so good to cross out like seven, eight, nine, ten, 10 or something on the calendar. How do you deal with anxiety over school? With all the experience I've had, I realize that it really comes down to a few, few causes, whether it's fear of humiliation, fear of failure, peer judgment, the need to do well and to succeed wouldn't be there if you didn't feel like you were being watched. But on one hand, it's a blessing that you can be surrounded by other students. Really, see it as a resource. I'm sorry if the people that you're in class with make it a very toxic environment because that's it sucks, it's, it's unfair. But even when, when I'm completely secure around my entire group and I love everyone, there is still the feeling of expectations and sometimes it's self-inflicted like self-sabotaging attack those problems um, because your anxiety is a reaction and your body is like signaling to you when it doesn't get better how, how do I deal with it when it's like so bad in my building it's a very old building college building ah it's set on a hill so it's a very interesting building where you enter on the fourth floor at the top of one street but the first floor is at the bottom of a different street and all along here there are random staircases and elevators and hallways and there's one particular segment of stairs that is a very narrow spiral black staircase and it's normally in pitch blackness you can turn on the light there's a switch but very very low foot traffic in there uh, i always love it because it allows you to cut through so you you do have to like exert more energy because there are steep stairs and you don't have you don't have to walk like all the way around but those stairs i go to those stairs that is my safe space and i sit at the top of those stairs in pitch blackness sometimes the light from the third floor echoes up so you can kind of see i've even like written a poem while sitting there and when you're there i can also hear people walking in the hallway and it's, it's weird because I feel like I'm separate and I'm in this place and nobody knows it which is one feeling for me but then I'm like oh but I'm here in the school and I'm present and like that's probably my classmate like walking to and from the weaving room it's a nice break from my anxiety in those times and it definitely helps me calm and talking about my major if I can change it would I? I've been thinking about that a lot so on the one hand, I always say I am I do not regret learning about textiles because I love textiles. The history of textiles, I admire it so much. I can sit here and talk about string and how like the string revolution should be as big as the stone age and just all of that because it enabled us to make tools. Like you can't get the tool if you couldn't have that twine and you couldn't hunt back then in our yeah so sorry textiles will always be a part of me in that way but in terms of like majoring it has shifted my opinions on a lot of things and my career goals have changed a lot if anything i would go back to school and get another degree because i love my textile degree and i love the things i've learned it just sucks that i no longer want to do what i wanted to do which was 
be in corporate textile. Sometimes I think I would be equally as happy being an animation student because the very first time I wanted to go to art school it was all about animation and I wanted to go to Cal Arts and I loved visual storytelling and I loved video, screenplay, filmography, la la but I ended up thinking about fashion more. I still want to create clothing but it's definitely for different reasons. What are my plans? Alright, so I have plans. They've changed a lot so if I had to confess I have no idea what I'm doing and it's okay, it's okay. I kind of know what I want to do and I'm going to try it out but because I'm not really looking to find a corporate job anymore, I am like, um, okay. I don't think I'm going to return to California just yet. I want to be friends with New England a little longer and when it's time to go home, I will go home. I have this desire to try making my site more legit, have the time to devote to that. So that would make me, I guess, a small business owner, an independent artist. Sounds scary, like I'm gonna be an artist. I'm very much a stranger to other mediums at the moment and I want to have the time to just try it and to develop it and to study it even if it's on my own and that just takes so much time and energy so I only hope that I have the self-discipline and the focus and rigor to do that but I don't think I can like have an apartment and a studio with my income so literally like I'm, I will be living in a home office kind of situation and yes I will be continuing YouTube I think that it will feel natural when it's time for Cat Creature to say goodbye and Right now, I think there's so much more that I would love to share. So I, I will update you on what it's like when maybe I'm like out of college and everything like that. I've been feeling very vulnerable in these last months because I'm so unsure of what I'm doing at the moment. Like I went from three years of feeling like I will end up in a corporate environment. Suddenly nothing is for sure. I'm very lucky to be able to do that though because not everyone has supportive parents for one. So thank you so much for the chance to chase after my dreams and my desires and not making me feel discouraged or afraid. But a part of me just intrinsically believes that if I really put my heart into something and I work at it as much as I can with all my energy, that it just can't fail. That's just growing up. You can be sure about something, you can be so sure about something and then it's like, nope, I can't snap by the way. I'm gonna be living with one of my friends. If you're wondering like, well, how does Tyler feel about that? We agreed that this is the time for me to experience living on my own or living with a friend and if it's any time, it's right now. If we mean to be together forever after that, then that's the time for it. At the moment, he's with my family too, so if I went to live with him, it would be like me living at home. That's not what I want right after graduation. That would literally make me into a couch potato. <laughs> Now, life questions. How do you balance vlogging and capturing moments while also being fully present? It's hard. It makes you second guess some of your actions like, oh, should I vlog this? Because I can be very present when I'm filming. It's actually how to be present when I'm not filming. What are things that you do to calm you down? Maybe it's because I talk to the camera a lot and I edit, which takes like 10, 15 hours. I'm very anti-technology. I should have mentioned this for the first question. Maybe Tyler would benefit from someone who's more tech savvy or loves to talk about tech more, but I'm not really. What do I do when I calm down? I literally do not go on my phone. I can leave the house without my phone. How do you tell the time? Wear a watch. What sucks though is when I leave for class and I forget my phone and it's a five hour long class and I'm so bored during break, <laughs> I really regret that. I don't actually intentionally leave without my phone sometimes, but I do because that's how little I go on my phone. Anything that can make me more present in just the world in front of me because I keep reminding myself sometimes that even like 50 years ago, people were not exposed to this amount of stimuli. And nowadays we see so much, it's like no wonder we get anxious because we see and absorb so much information. So we, we need slow down time. I just watched a TED talk earlier today about tech advancement and our 
pace of life speeding up and how it's a double-edged sword funny thing is everything is made so convenient and fast but we always feel like we don't have enough time like we always feel like we're running out of time which is like the opposite because all of these advancements were made for us to save time but then yet it's reverse psychology and it sucks i can make a whole video about that but i'm i'm a very unplugged person i do not charge my phone for two to three days at a time because it does not run out of battery and i don't keep my charger by my bed i keep it under my table because the cord's really short so when i charge it i put it under my table and then when it's not charged i like wherever it is and then i don't charge it for three days until it's like 10 percent. do you think of yourself as a human being or a human doing i don't know why i just thought of human doo doo i think of myself as a human being things i value my in my life the most are the state of love and happiness being in the company of other people i love being helpful to people being supportive even when i do things like i love learning things i feel like i am being someone who is challenging themselves to learn new skills while i'm doing things can you talk about sustainable fashion choices and also veganism there's no short easy answer I have planned to make a whole other video about sustainable fashion or just my quitting fast fashion so look out for that it's no easy thing you're not just changing what you buy like you're literally changing your habits I'm trying to figure it out still myself and right now a lot of people have eco-anxiety talking about emissions of travel it's so complicated because travel is one of the most fulfilling things to me and every time though when you use transportation like what can you do research is key and sharing our different ideas i read one i think on the guardian somebody buys offsets every time they go on vacations as it neutralizes their impact my philosophy to it is i will be mindful of it and i continue to research these values that i have and i think over time it's all about slowly transitioning my lifestyle and shifting into someone like i still have not gone camping once in my life and if i am to be more experience driven and in touch with nature i want to maybe i will explore more of my local nature and um, take less long distance trips over time but it's not like oh guys this is bad this is good change no matter how nervous we are or how urgent the state of the world is you just need to be kind and encouraging to each other because real change comes from inspiring that brings me into talking about choosing to go vegan and my diet changes uh, was sort of inspired by a friend of mine lana and i talked about her she is the C co ceo of impact everything and they do a lot so you can follow them on instagram and check them out around the time i decided to try being a flexitarian if you remember that that was a time where she was first going full out vegan and we were just talking about it and i also watched some documentaries talking about the sheer amount of water it takes and how the world cannot continue to feed everybody because there's just not enough resources to produce meat Sometimes I miss eating meat and dairy, of course, because they're tied to my cultural identity, all the comfort foods that I loved growing up. But that's the thing about diets is that changes don't work unless in your heart you believe that it's a permanent thing. A couple times, Tyler and I went dairy-free for two weeks and it was mainly to help us not eat junk food. It was so hard because you're literally counting down the days until you're free, you know? So that's why it doesn't work unless you're like, I'm changing my mind because of these values and living in alignment with them. So maybe it started from me being a flexitarian and people gave me shit for it. They are like, there's no such thing as a flexitarian. Like, what are you trying to be? It's just like, okay back off like i can be whatever i want to be i just never purchased meat whenever i could and the only time i ate meat was when i was with my family or when we went to nice restaurants and there was nothing vegetarian i still ordered meat when i'm out like when we went to dim sum there was shrimp inside the buns i was like all right but now it's actually a very natural thing in me i was just like nope i don't eat it I don't eat it but back then it was more of like a self-control so it happens little by little and even though people were doubtful whenever i was like i'm flexitarian i just wanted to be flexitarian i didn't want the pressure of saying oh i'm vegetarian then i became vegetarian and then 
couple months ago, I decided to try cutting out dairy bit by bit. So I, I consider that's where I am now. I'm a flex of vegan, if you will, right? And at the most, it's like when I'm really desperate for food, for choir rehearsals on the weekends, someone always brings in donut holes. And sometimes I would skip breakfast and I just really, really need that donut hole. <laughs> when I went home for the holidays, I told myself I will have the chocolate cookies that I love because it's the first Christmas where my diet has changed. I need to have it a few more times to cherish it and slowly say goodbye. And it works for me that way. I didn't get Krispy Kreme because I didn't, I didn't happen upon one, so I didn't get it, but I still haven't said my goodbye to Krispy Kreme either. And I will have Krispy Kreme sometime, but it's a personal journey. So don't hound people on it because of all the people that were pressuring me about it, three years ago like in the comments and stuff it's like you do nothing for the movement if anything you just harm it so much credit goes to my friend lana because she's just inspiring she was a resource and i had questions and she would happily be supportive did my cat's attitude change after i became vegan i don't think so if anything my cats at home don't even care about me anymore because they're just like departed from me and loyal cats of my parents who live and are permanent residents of the house. Pumpkin could not care less about me. Toby was like, all right, I like you, but you know, you're gonna abandon us. The only thing though that has been nice is that because I don't prepare any meat, um, I don't need to worry about them stealing my food. When they walk even to my finished bowl of food, I'm like, yeah, sniff it all you want. You're not gonna want any of that. It does take occasional interest in my meat my fake veggie grounds because it has this very convincing umami smell silly question i love this what animal would be cutest if scaled down to the size of a mouse i gave this a long and hard think it was like all morning i was thinking about this and it was hard because i kept imagining all these animals to this size and i kept getting freaked out i finally came to the conclusion <laughs> that orcas would be so adorable if they were mouse sized if you have your suggestions, please tell me in the comments because I would love to know. But I feel like most animals scaled down would just seem very scary. Like imagine a tiny puma, like tiny puma. I don't know, it's just like proportions, I guess. So orcas and penguins, I think would be so cute. Why is the closet door in your bedroom always open? First, I want to say I closed it for you at the beginning of this when I was prepping my room. I leave it open because, well, it's twofold. That stupid shoe rack that Tyler got is really flimsy. Sometimes if I close it wrong, it's going to half fall down and I have to fix it. Because I don't really like looking at it either. It's like an eyesore to see that white plastic rack. It's very ugly. But the second reason is because my closet is much deeper than the width of the door is actually double so you can go inside it's not there's not much but like you go inside and i used to have drawers in there so i just leave it open so i can just like walk to and from what harry styles shows are you going to so i will be going to his one concert in madison square garden very excited our seats are not the best, but I'm really excited anyways because Madison Square Garden has a screen so I can see his face, okay? Because when we paid all that money to sit in the last row in Boston two years ago, we bought them on a third party site, so it's our fault. No, we're in the second to last row, so I guess that's slightly better, not really. And the Boston Wing Theater did not have any screens or cameras, so Harry was a grain of rice. He was dressed in yellow, so he was a tiny yellow grain of rice. And I couldn't even hear him either. Cause just like the, I blame the concert hall. It's not really made for that. It's not made for a Harry Styles concert. If anybody is going to that one, let me know. I would love to say hi. Do you think that LGBTQI and religion can go together? Yes, I do. I go to a non-denominational church and we're more liberal than some that I know of. And especially last year, there was a woman who joined our church because she identified as a woman after, I don't know, like 70 years. She was kicked out of her church and she came to find us. The details are escaping me, um, but I still just remember how moving it was and how special it was. 
that day where she joined and became a member. Those are my beliefs. I think that they can go together and everybody interprets the Bible differently. Are there any vloggers you can recommend? I was excited for this question because yes, I have been watching a lot of new vloggers since the last time we caught up. So my two long-term relationships have been Bubs and Rhiannon and they have their own vlog channel and it's just a very comforting like thing from my childhood because I've been watching them since middle school and they mean a lot to me. Their life has changed a lot. It's crazy. They're both parents and their insight on their parent life has helped me. New people that I've started watching since the end of last year, um, Cheyenne Barton, really love listening to her thoughts. I love her voice. Uh, Savannah Brown, very inspiring writer. I really want to read her novel and uh, I, I was so tickled to know that she also watched some of my videos. I was like, I want to meet all these people. I technically met Bubs. I met her for like a good few seconds and I met Tim and her son. I met your son. And also Apple Cheeks, dear Tiffany, very talented illustrator and we connected off YouTube. That's how I discovered her videos and things like that. She joined more recently. And Jenny from where I live. I also like to listen to Jenny talk. She has a very interesting inflection to her voice. I think I pay a lot of attention to, to speech. I feel like I'm missing some, but... Oh, Amy. Amy Lee. Advice on camera equipment for a beginner vlogger. Nowadays, if you have a smartphone, it's so capable of filming that you don't have to worry about getting an official camera. 10 years ago, the trend was having a DSLR. I remember when I first joined six, seven years ago, you have to have a Canon what was it called like t4i or something like or else you're just not legit and now it's the g7x i always link down my equipment down below if you're interested use your phone of course it's not as stable so you have to be more mindful not to make it too nauseating when you're walking you don't need a legit tripod i stack things very precariously when i film whether it's books or mugs or your friend i used to think I need a nice mic for when I do chit chat videos because this camera is not great but that's something I've realized people don't expect as much unless it's like so bad I guess then I understand best piece of advice you've ever gotten or learned something my mom has told me a couple times is to take care of yourself before you can go out into the world and make waves of change and impact others, all of that. You have to make sure that you are your best because I always feel like I'm being washed. Like I, I guess that's what it, it's like if you do vlogs. You just like, there's always gonna be criticism, which there is. So it's not about trying to tune yourself to be someone who gets no criticism. That's impossible. When I tried to do that, I just fell flat. I wasn't myself on camera. People who take care of themselves and are in a good place do not feel the need to like go around hurting other people. This is knowing for me firsthand that is not easy and it's not easy to experience self-love and like even this week I don't even think until like yesterday really did I actually feel this sense of relief like I'm okay. Many times I wake up and the first thing that f flushes into my head is a feeling that I'm not doing enough or I'm not doing good enough or I'm not good enough. If I keep letting those thoughts control me, it prevents me from doing anything. It petrifies you. I tend to care maybe too much sometimes and I want to carry other people's emotional burdens and responsibilities. It doesn't mean that you have to be 100% dependent on yourself. That's, that's a different thing. She'll just remind me like focus on yourself. Don't think about what other people want for you. They should spend their time thinking about themselves before telling other people what they should be doing. That brings me into what am I proud of myself for? I can't believe that when I read this question yesterday, I literally couldn't really think of anything and that's really s screwed up. Like I need to really, I need to work on myself and give myself more credit. Even if you watch all my content, it's hard to really know me. People are very surprised by what I tell them about my upbringing and it's very easy to assume that my parents seem one way because how they are in a 26 minute video. A lot has changed and that includes me and I'm really proud because I used to have a lot of ugliness in my character. In the last 
five years, I've really turned myself around and try my best to focus that hurt into compassion, how it can be constructive. But I still remember the very thoughts I had when I was a hurtful person. I definitely know I've come a long way. Sometimes you forget, even like when I was in elementary school, but it's just like stuff with my biological dad, what he did and how I felt when we did live with him and when I lived in China and I know exactly why and how I came to be like that and I can, I can only imagine how other people become how they are and anyway, I have a long way to go and I I'm proud of myself that I can even be proud of myself. So that's a conversation for another day. How old are you? Really, I don't know. I am 21 turning 22. I feel like about 100 sometimes when, I, when I'm around certain people my age because it's hard for me to fit in. I know a lot of people my age are similar. William and I get along very well because we both have old souls, I guess. However, he's a lot more tuned into pop culture. I had to think like memes and stuff and it, it could be because he's on Twitter and I just still don't really, I have not figured out Twitter yet. Do you see yourself sometime in the future married, being a mother cooking in your life depending on other schedules? Yes, I do. It could be because I was a younger child in a divorced family that I've always wanted to be a homemaker and I craved that. I realized later on that like having a husband or children doesn't fulfill you the same way that I, I thought it would in my mind. And, and that's why I wanted to bring up like watching Rhiannon and Bubs being moms, seeing the really frustrating and downsides to pregnancy and motherhood and everything has made me embrace this time now to like to live my life as an independent person before I have kids. And when I'm ready to have people depend on me, I will be ready so when I know, I know. But I know for sure that I want kids. I'm very fulfilled by that. When I hang out with my loved ones, I don't really need to be entertained. It's just about like being there and I could keep you company. With my sister and mom, they're a lot more impatient. It's less enjoyable for them if there isn't something in it for everyone. And it's really obvious sometimes that I'm just like, I ask and then she's like, okay, like, okay, I'll do it. They don't want to, so it really hurts my feelings. But I understand that we're different people. My mom wanted to go shopping and I don't really go shopping at malls anymore, but I would just walk around with her for like three hours. I will keep you company. It reminds me of how my dad, my stepdad is more like when he took me to swim practice for the brief time I did swimming or for the brief time I did tumbling, he would sit there and watch me. When he took me to art class, he would wait for me outside. But then from my mom, it was more like, I will drop you off, I will go entertain myself at the mall and then I will pick you up. There is no wrong in being like that. It's just their personality. So shout out to my dad. I'm very grateful for for all the times he just kept my sister and me company, even if it's something he wasn't interested in. I remember, I will always remember that. It was definitely necessary. Like that love really went to my heart. All right, that is it for this video. As you see, it's dark now because the sun is about to set and it's 4 p.m. Because I never really do Q and A's, I really took this seriously as you could see. For the rest of the day, I'm going to work on my homework due tomorrow that I have a star day. I hope to see you very soon. So have a good rest of your day. Bye.